Hello YouTube. Welcome back to my garage. It's finally time for another project. It's a beautiful spring day out here in Phoenix. I think it's the first week of March and uh, I'm excited to uh, get going on this one here. So I finally got my steps from the Predator folks out in California. So these are the, uh, the steel plates and the side steps incorporated into them. I waited seven months for these and I was supposed to have them last Thanksgiving, but uh, those guys out there are crazy busy. So these have the integrated steps in them, which are gonna be a nice addition to uh, climb up in that thing. And um, this should be a pretty uh, easy install. Uh, but mine's gonna get a little more involved because also included in this project, I'm putting in the Predator Deluxe Carpet Kit. This stuff is really nice, it's super thick. It's gonna replace the uh, factory gray padding that's in there now. And then there's the uh, adhesive neoprene underlayment that fills the gaps in the body to, uh, to keep it all nice and flat. So when those uh, factory pads come out, you have to fill in the low spots with something and that's what that neoprene padding is for. And while I have all that taken apart, I decided I'm gonna coat all of my interior panels with this Raptor liner kit. Um, it's you got all the stuff for plastic and you got the adhesion promoter, you got the uh, degreaser for plastic. So a lot of parts got to come out of there. There, I think there's 18 pieces inside the truck. They're going to get coated because that, you know, after 25 years, that gray really doesn't look gray anymore. So I thought this would be a nice add on. And I went ahead and got the, uh, the upgraded spray gun, which gives you a lot more control. It's actually a little bit different than the, uh, than the one that comes in the kit. So it's a little different, it gives you more uh, nozzle, uh, a lot more nozzle control here for your pattern and your texture. And if you're doing a lot of small parts, I think that's gonna work out well. I can dial it into what I like. Now I'm not gonna do a video on this Raptor liner stuff. I mean, there's a ton of YouTube videos where you can watch these kits being installed. And um, it looks like a pretty nice product. It's a lot of good reviews. They also come in different colors, but I'm just gonna stick with black on the lower half of the truck. So anyway, um, I'm only gonna do one side at a time. I'm gonna do the passenger side first. I'm gonna do it start to finish. I'm gonna pull the seats out. I'm gonna pull the interior pieces out and get everything fitted in there, done and all buttoned up. I just don't have room to take this whole truck apart with all the pieces that gotta come out. So I'm um, just gonna do one side at a time. I think it'll just uh, you know, be a lot easier that way. So. All right, we're going to go, uh, we're going to get the truck backed in here and turn it around and then we're going to start pulling the seats out and getting some of those interior pieces out of there. And then we'll come back and um, continue on from there. Okay, that went well. So here are the parts that I don't need to do anything with. There's the seats and all the uh, crash pads and up front parts, seat brackets. And then down here, uh, these are all the interior plastic pieces. I got to get them all sorted out, get the speaker taken out get them all cleaned up and ready to go. So on the inside, kind of looks like this. It leaves you with a big dirty mess to clean up. And if you're gonna take these things apart, uh, be careful with these, uh, these studs in here. They're just aluminum studs and this one's actually broken, but I have a stud welder, so I'll be able to grind that off and just weld the new stud onto that. And on the bottom, there's a, uh, I don't know what it is. It looks like there was a forest fire in here or something, but it's not, it's just a, it's just all this stuff and it comes up pretty easy. So I'm gonna have to spend some time and just scrape all this stuff off the bottom and uh, get this pan nice and clean and uh, get it all the, all the dirt and everything scrubbed out of it. Fortunately, what's really nice is there is a drain hole right down there in the front, which uh, I can roll this thing out of the driveway and all the water will just rush out that hole. And all the connectors and everything are pretty much waterproof. So I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, I'm going to spend a couple hours getting this cleaned up. And um, once I get it cleaned up, I can go ahead and uh, actually I could probably drop the factory pan at any time and get that out of there. And uh, so the new piece will go back in pretty quick. And then all the rest of the labor will be getting these interior parts painted and um, getting that new polyurethane foam fitted in there and stuck down. Or I'm sorry, not uh, polyurethane, but neoprene. Uh, that's good for uh, sound deadening and, and uh, rattle absorption, all that stuff too. So anyway, I'm going to come back when this is clean. going to be a while and uh, we'll continue on. 
So after a couple of hours of scrubbing and scraping and soaping up the inside, I think I got the inside of this thing really clean. I did lose a little bit of the uh, the coating on the bottom. That's just bare aluminum down there, so not a big deal. It's going to get covered up with the uh, with the neoprene padding. But yeah, this thing came out pretty clean. Uh, no complaints there. It's going to be a nice uh, nice dry surface to uh, stick that new neoprene down onto. So um. Got that going, and uh, next I think I'm safe to uh, install this uh, this bottom pan here. So this trusty little cart, which I've done and used in several of my videos, this thing is just you know it's invaluable to uh, to have this thing. I can just roll this thing under the truck, position it where it needs to go, run it up, get those bolts started. And uh, also when I was cleaning out the inside, hey check this out, I found a total of 26 cents in cold hard cash. Who says hard work doesn't pay? Ha ha. But anyway, I'm going to get this uh, run up and get the bolt started and get this thing bolted on there. And um, then it's going to be off to uh, getting set up to start doing all those interior pieces. So we'll come back then. I turned my one car garage into a temporary spray booth. Just lined the walls and the floors with some six mil plastic. And uh, my old Corbo seat boxes and this old wire shelf are going to make a pretty good paint rack. So I'm waiting for the second coat. I put two coats of the Raptor Adhesion Promoter, which is they recommend that for plastic. So I've got that on there. I'm waiting for it to flash off. They say to wait about 30 minutes. When I start spraying the uh, polyurethane, the stuff's going to go everywhere. And um, I've got my air hose down here. I even wrapped it with some... Uh, I got some plastic sheeting that went around and uh, it's basically just bag material. And I'm gonna start at the regulator at about 55 PSI to see what kind of a fixture or what kind of a uh, texture I'm gonna get, but I can adjust it uh, pretty quick. And I don't wanna be tracking this stuff all over because it's gonna get everywhere. So I've got some shoe covers there. I could put some of those on. If I uh, come out, I could take them off and don't wanna be tracking that stuff all over my pavers. And uh, there's my trusty helper right there. Well, she's not much help, but she's fun to have around. And then, uh, so I degreased everything. They recommend using the uh, the uh, Upal UP2002. I degreased her on the plastic. There was a lot of sanding and scuffing to do. And then there's the adhesion promoter. And then there's the, uh, the uh, Raptor kit. So these are filled short. They're not completely full. You put eight ounces of this. In here, you shake it up, you put it on the gun, and you shoot. So, should go pretty quick. And um, it dries pretty fast also. They say about an hour for uh, to where you can touch it, but a day or so before you can actually start handling it and putting these pieces back in. So, get set up here shortly, and then uh, we'll come back when I have them all sprayed and see how it went. We are back. It's been about three hours since I uh, sprayed all this stuff, and I tell you what, man, I am very impressed with this product. I can't believe how well this turned out. I mean, these pieces just look fantastic. So having that variable uh, nozzle gun is, um, is worth every penny. I mean, I started out with just a little bit. I mean, you can get this stuff to spray so fine to where it barely coats. And if you look at this out in the sun, I mean, the, the results of this stuff are just fantastic. I mean, it came out... I don't know how much of this you're gonna be able to see, but man, it, it just comes out. Just, it's a beautiful finish. I mean, just really, really nice. So it's gonna be a nice uh, nice upgrade from that fading, strange colored gray stuff that, you know, that's in there now. But, um, uh, so yeah, I was right about the stuff going everywhere. I mean, it is sticky. I mean, these are the shoe covers I was wearing, and this would have been all over the bottom of the shoes, and I would have ended up tracking it anywhere. So yeah, a couple pennies there, and, um, you know the hose the bag got coated so i'm glad i did that and i shot this stuff i ended up going all the way down to about 40 psi and it just it's very easy to control and i'm not a painter so i'm going to say anybody can do this man it just came out just fantastic i am so happy with how this how this came out but uh yeah i'm really excited about that and as far as how much i used i think i still have I don't know, I only went with the one bottle. And uh, there's probably, it probably feels like it's about up to about here. So there's probably a good eight ounces left in the first bottle. And it's down there curing up right now. 
so this will do you know pretty much half the truck now i if you get if you got a wagon you know you've got a lot of overhead pieces for your head around your headliner your pillars and your console and everything so you're probably going to use more product but um so for the soft top one bottle will get through half the parts no problem and having this uh Having this adjustable nozzle is, is great because once you find a spot you like, you can lock it down, leave it there. So make sure you get the uh, same texture on everything else. So that's it for the, uh, you know, the interior coating parts. I'm going to let these set up for uh, overnight anyway. And, um, you know, it's really dry here in Phoenix right now. And um, these have, these had to cure up perfectly overnight, but... Uh, Anyway, got something else going on on the interior truck. We'll show you that in a minute, but um, real happy with how this turned out. And I know this stuff comes in a bunch of different colors. And a little bit of history, AM General destroyed all the molds that it took to make these parts. I mean, if, if they would have had a little, you know, hindsight of how popular these trucks are going to be, they could have just kept making these panels or sold off the molds to somebody. I mean, imagine how many different colors you could you could order these interior pieces in if somebody got a hold of the molding process. But AM General went ahead and destroyed everything. That's why some of these parts are getting so hard to find. But uh, anyway, on to the next step, and uh, I'll see you back inside the truck with what I got going on there. So while I was waiting for parts to dry, I decided to go ahead and... Uh, Dynamat the entire interior of the uh, the footwell here all the way up to the top of the tunnel and all the way down into the, the footwell up there and I even did underneath here and I did around the back here and um, the stuff is great. I mean, it's super tacky. There's a lot of rivets in this truck So you got to get over the top of them the best you can if you get a big air bubble just slit it with a razor blade and then you can roll it flat, but um, you know all that stuff that is scraped out of the bottom of this thing was probably the old sound uh, deadening mat anyway after 25 years the stuff just crumbled away so it was probably a good idea to put some stuff back in here ended up buying this uh this i don't know what they call it the, the mega pack it's uh it's nine sheets of two foot by four foot and i ended up using three sheets plus whatever's left of that one so less than four sheets uh, don't ever throw these little scraps away i mean you can use those to fill in little voids anywhere none of this stuff goes to waste but it turned out pretty good you get the little roller and you roll it all in and there's some spots you obviously you can't get uh you know around because there's there's so much uh you know spraying caulking or whatever that stuff is a body filler which is gonna do the same thing the dynamat is anyway but anyway so that part is done and i could go ahead and start putting uh these interior panels back in can't wait to see what that looks like and I actually already started tearing out the other side. A lot more wires on that side. But I'll get that side pulled apart. So I'm going to get started on uh, putting some of these interior panels in. And, and uh, we'll come back when I get some of those buttoned up. Okay, I thought this would be a good time to do a quick update. Show you guys where I am. So I got pretty much all the panels put in the passenger side here. Man, this looks really good. I mean, it's just this stuff just comes out so nice. I'm really happy with it. So I got it all finished up to the front. I uh, got the inside kick panels, this uh, seat belt retractor cover, and I'm going to wait on the back ones. Um, I got this one just sitting up here, but the carpet goes up behind this, so I'm going to do these three little pieces last. So the next thing to do here is put the uh, the neoprene padding down where the old mat was to fill in this low spot right here so it'll go from here to here and it'll bring it up to this level so when i put the carpet kit in it will sit flush all the way down another thing i did i added a washer right here and i could have painted it black but you're never going to see it behind the seat and i didn't like the way these things always fell down they always fell down between the seats and the plastic and somebody gets in and they got to go digging for them because they drop to the bottom plus it keeps it from tearing up that finish on there so if you add a washer right there pretty fat one it's about almost a quarter inch thick that'll keep these seat belt uh brackets up in the air to where um they'll be above the cushion and you won't have to go looking for them so i'm gonna do that on the other side as well another thing i did is uh, the little plastic panels here that um hold all the trim pieces on they uh the old gray ones which they don't make anymore i guess i could have just painted these but a lot of them the way they're mold it they don't really hold anymore so 
I just took some black Delrin and I just machined out uh, some that look like this or threaded all the way to the bottom. It's a 1032 thread and uh, it gives it a nice, nice little trim feature in there. And then, uh, you know, just another little custom touch. And um, as far as the gray screws that held all the panels in, yeah, you can just poke those into a piece of cardboard and just shoot them with some black, uh, satin black spray paint. So that's about it. And I, you know, I said earlier in the video that I was going to do this side start to finish. And uh, it just didn't work out that way. So I ended up tearing out the other side as well. I found out that I had to get my step put in before I did anything else. So I got the, uh, I got the Predator steps put in on this side also. This side's all completely dismantled and cleaned. And this one is ready for Dynamat. So I'll get started on that one pretty quick. And I just finished spraying all the pieces that go on the driver's side. Let's go out and look at those real quick. And we'll go out here to the one car garage slash paint booth. There's where I clean my spray gun. The uh, HOA will love that. But uh, this floor ought to be dry enough to walk on now. But anyway, so here's all the... Uh, all the other pieces I just shot uh, I'm about two hours ago so they're ready to go they're gonna cure up for I'm gonna let them cure up for a couple days at least and uh, this piece right here we'll go back in the truck and look at that this one is 3d printed we've been playing around with um, printing these out of uh, carbon fiber and then doing the uh, Raptor liner on the outside to see what that looks like this was a very crude prototype so I just thought I would shoot it to see what the finish would look like on that 3D printed material. And then of course got the rest of them here. And that shifter bezel, uh, those things are like unicorns, man. If you can find one of those, that's in good shape. I actually had to do a little bit of repair on that one, but it turned out great. Some of this stuff just doesn't exist anymore and you gotta, you gotta keep it alive. You gotta keep these pieces going and uh, do what you can if they're broken and, uh, and uh, yeah, they're just, they're hard to come by. So that piece that was out there with the spray coating on it, this is uh, machined out of a quarter inch aluminum and it's powder coated. Uh, the guys out of Predator used to make one of these out of aluminum. It was textured. It was really nice. And uh, they quit making them because not all Hummer bodies are the same. These holes can vary, you know, a quarter inch in either direction. I mean, they're kind of built coming down the assembly line with hand drill jigs and, you know, no tour or like. So they had a lot of problems getting these to fit from one vehicle to the next. So... They just stopped making them, and I was kind of bummed out because I really wanted one. This is better than that little piece of bent tin going around the corner. But uh, So I just machined this one up and had it powder coated, put some uh, black oxide stainless screws in it. And that was an incredible amount of work. There are so many angles machined into that. And down here, it fits really flush and tight up against the body. It's solid. You can't move it. And, uh, you know, so we thought... I mean, a buddy of mine thought we could print these things out of carbon fiber and then texture them and uh, maybe get them out there in the marketplace. But uh, so we're still playing around, kicking around with that. But um, anyway, that's the update. Uh, next thing to do is get going on that um, neoprene liner on the floor so we can do the carpet. And I want to get this side wrapped up and uh, we'll catch up soon. All right. So all of the neoprene padding is in. This stuff is really easy to cut. It's super sticky. And uh, now that everything's in there, it's all flat across the top so that carpet can go in here. So the last time I did one of these trucks, I did a different carpet kit and I was able to slip it in underneath all the panels. This one is so much thicker and it's not gonna go under. So I had to pull all the interior panels back out. So the carpet had to get in and get fitted. And then, uh, so I just wanted to show you what the neoprene looked like. And then the carpet kit basically is right here and this stuff is super thick i mean it is nice stuff but this thing weighs a ton now the carpet gets don't come with holes you have to put those in so once you get the carpet exactly where you want it you just take it all like this and you start poking it through about where you think your seat bolts are and then you mark that when you find the center of your uh, bolt hole and then you can use something like an arch punch just take something like this and slip it underneath the carpet and get it underneath and then you can just drive that in and uh, you can get a nice clean hole cut out and then you just do the four for the front, the four for the rear, and then your carpet's ready to go back in. Now, if you're doing stock seat brackets, you might not get away with doing a hole this big. This is a three quarter inch hole. 
So um, my seat bracket's gonna cover this entirely, so I was able to get away with a little bit extra slop. But anyway, the carpet goes back in, then the panels go back in, and then the seat brackets go in, and this side is uh, is about done. So we'll check back in a little bit, see how much I, of this I can get put together today. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you this one more time before the seat brackets went in. This side is complete, finally. And you know what, the panels, they don't rattle anymore. They used to rattle a lot before the uh, before the carpet went in and the dirt and the uh, dynamat and everything else. I mean, it's it's pretty well buttoned up and cushioned. So up front, I can't really see with the glare, but I'll come around the front side. So yeah, that just turned out fantastic, and that carpet fits under there real nice, and and uh, I'm really happy with that. So uh, now we're gonna go and uh, all the back panels are back on. And we're going to go ahead and put the seat brackets in and the seats. And uh, this side will be finished finally. So I got to tell you, this was not a weekend project. This is my third week into this project. And uh, it is labor intensive. If you uh, take the time and do all the work on the panels and the dynamat and the uh, cleaning of the floor, when you get everything else out, you'll get a really nice finished product. So uh, put in the time. It's worth it. But um, three weeks... And I've probably got a week to finish the other side. I haven't even started on the dynamite over there yet. So, all right, seat brackets are going in, and we will call this side all finished. Okay, one last look before we uh, wrap up this side. So I've got the seat back in, seat bracket. I um, mean, went together real nice. Everything looks good. Now up front, I've got these. Uh, I don't have the seat in yet because if you watched my last video when I put the Corbo seats in, I mentioned that your front seat has to be at a three degree angle. So I did it at three degrees and I bolted it all in and the side of the seat just hit right here. It was just a little too close for my liking. It kind of sandwiched the, the uh, seat belt in there a little bit. So I had to make new brackets. I'm gonna make it change it to like three and a half or four degrees. And I couldn't use, I couldn't reuse these because the holes were too close to the edge, so there wasn't any room to go this way with it. So I just had to make wider brackets. And luckily I made this, uh, I'm just gonna pivot it off one existing hole right here. So uh, this right here represents three degrees where I have the scribe mark. So now I could just change it just a little bit, mark those holes and get the seat positioned. And then these gotta go down for a powder coat, but that's an easy job. Take a couple days to get those back. Meanwhile, I could be working on the other side. So uh, that's about it for this side. Uh, the other side is going to go a lot faster. I'm not going to put my uh, AC cover back on until the other side's in because it kind of hangs down over the, uh, the edge a little bit. But really happy, really happy with the way this turned out. And uh, can't wait to get it done and get it on the road and see how quiet this thing is. I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of insulation under there now, so... We'll come back uh, when we get the other side going, and um, that should just about wrap up the video, and uh, see you guys in a little bit. We are at the end of another video. So the driver's side is complete, and everything's put back together, and this just came out beautiful. I'm really happy with it. So that piece up there, had to make a repair on it, but uh, came out really, really well. And uh, even went down and got some, uh, some of the... Uh, Lloyd's uh, floor mats that go into the bottom. This uh, this carpet kit from Predator was like almost a thousand bucks. So um, kind of spendy. So I might as well just put the floor mats on top of it to keep it protected. But so all the seats are back in. Uh, looks great. I mean, I, I have no complaints. So um, down the road, uh, this carpet's going to get replaced with a piece of black. And these door panels are going to go in. Uh, probably going to get the bottom house recovered in leather. Going to get rid of these... Uh, dated very dated kangaroo pouches those things just uh, they don't look real good in here anymore so um the door panels are going to get some work get a piece of black carpet replace that one and on the driver's side we got the uh the seat brackets came back from powder coat after a few days and the passenger seat is in now i've got that probably about a four degree angle so i've got good clearance all around here i've got cl good clearance uh along the back here i can get my hand in there and uh, the seat belt's nice and free. So no more issues there. And uh, that's it. That is the end of this video. It came out really nice, happy with it. And um, 
that may be about the uh, last project before summer because it is March 26th and I think I worked on this thing every day for 26 days at least for a couple few hours here and there so like I said before this was a lot of work and uh, just to give you guys a spoiler alert my very next project is right here on the table I got four new pieces of factory tint door glass I got all of the uh, the belt line strips the new the new version that clip in uh, I've got the new brackets that go onto the bottom of the glass and uh, these are from a Volkswagen Jetta. Uh, same thing as what's in the truck, except these are only $8. And the ones in the truck from the supplier are almost $100. So uh, you do the math. Uh, you've got the glass setting tape. Um, I'll show you guys how, later how to put the glass into this track using this tape. And four brand new uh, window regulators. These are the high torque versions uh, to replace the stock ones. Actually, all the stock ones work just fine, but I figured, why not? Let's just go and replace them and uh, put new stuff in this truck. So uh, so that's coming up next, and um, I'm not going to get to it. I don't think I'll get to this before summer. It's already starting to warm up pretty good here in Phoenix, but that is going to be the next project. Once I start this, I will probably work on these door panels and um, get those off and down to the upholstery shop at the same time I'm fitting all this new glass in. So anyway, that is the end of this video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you guys uh, have some trucks that are coming along nice. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.